you, when did you know that your dad was known to be notorious and I think he was one of Jamaica's most wanted? Yes. How did you deal with that? Um, well, all right, basically, let me tell you something. Separate apart from the life that they say about daddy, mm -hmm. daddy at home was always daddy. Yeah. So, became the only girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, I became tough, mm -hmm. very rough. Yeah. It attracted me being farming my own gang. Yeah. It, it drew a lot of attention because knowing who you are related to, boy, yeah. a daughter, sister, that you know, mm -hmm. a liberty sister, that you know. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, it had a great impact that persons would look up to you as so. Yeah. Welcome back, guys, to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. This is episode two, of course, of uh, an exciting interview we started last week with Camille Polk. Guys, here on Uniquely Me, we talk with women who've been through trauma and struggles. We talk to the tough-talking women and how they combated and fight and, and, and made their way through. And then we talk about the amazing saving grace of our Lord Jesus on their lives and how Jesus beautified them and put a big S, not superwoman, but of salvation. I caught you there. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, of course, there's another S I need you to pay attention to that subscribe button. Please make sure you're pressing it and the notification bell. And if you've not seen some of the other episodes, guys, they're all there. This season, we are completely on YouTube, not NTM, completely on YouTube. So, of course, I'm going to, I want you to get your drink and come back. We're going to season, we're going into episode two with Camille Cook. Uniquely me is uniquely you. Balancing the different hats of life. Achieving all your goals in the name of Christ. Uniquely me is uniquely you. You can do anything. The S on your chest, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You are a winner and you're an overcomer. You can be all things through Christ who gives you strength. Yeah. All right, so come here where we left off last week. I'm telling you, last week was, I don't even know what to say, it was hot. But you reached at the point where you're talking about now you, you are at Dwayne Park Police Station. Yes. And the police decides, so listen, no, we're not sending you back out. But your penina situation started. I don't know if we could call it like Joseph, the pit situation. Right. Right? And you're about to move to Potiphar's house. Right. But we know say Potiphar's house is not where it's at. But let's hear what took place in the pit or what took place there at Dwayne Park. All right. Um, while, 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 while they were at Dwayne Park, mm -hmm. when I was inside... I saw them bring in um, Joel and them fiance. Mm -hmm. she, they took her in also. Yeah. I see them bring in Tesha Miller mother, mm -hmm. Miss Sharon. Mm -hmm. She was there also. Mm -hmm. I remember when when I saw Miss Sharon came in, mm -hmm. something melted in my whole entire body. Yeah. My first thought was my mother. Yeah. Because I started saying to myself. If them carry this lady here, then they will go for my mother next. Mm -hmm. so anyhow, I said to her, I said, come inside of myself for some reason. I just said to her, come inside of myself. Yeah. Because I was just looking at like my mother. Yeah. She came inside of myself. Me, her, Tamika was there, that's Joel's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And um it's like when she come inside there, I realize she's a woman of God. Yeah. Because, you know. She just started to share with us, started to minister us, minister to us and all of that. But mm -hmm. really and truly, that was not my thing. Yeah. I was just more like, I want to come out, I want to go mm -hmm. home to my mother because I was behind the bars. My mm -hmm. brother was behind the bars. So my mother had to be doing double visits. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to remember, was your mom blind in that situation? No, though? that's my brother, mother. Okay. My okay. mom, all mm -hmm. right then. Um... I just give out God all the glory for my mother because trust me, she's surely a strong prayer person. Yes. And I know it is her prayer that helped break that cost my life, my salvation with the surrender to Jesus. Yeah. Anyhow, um, I remember one Sunday night we were there mm -hmm. 
And she said to me, she said, you know, let us pray. Mm -hmm. This is Tesha Miller's mom. Yeah, and I was mm -hmm. like, why? All right, make a pray. Mm -hmm. But saying, all right, let her pray. Mm -hmm. I'm very a person who have grown up learned to respect others, especially elders. Yeah. So, you know, when we went into the prayer, I felt it's a different presence inside of that cell. Yeah. And then it's like I pull back to myself and I say, what kind of feelings is this? Mm -hmm. Where the feelings you come from? Mm -hmm. I started to feel like my whole body was just trembling. Yeah. So, you know, I let go of her hands because... And so we're gonna experience this. Mm -hmm, Remember, mm -hmm. a big tough sand this, so you know what? Nobody really see a break. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Break in another body. And not under these circumstances. Yes, too. you understand? Mm -hmm. So, um, in the morning, when I got up and I sat on the bunk, and it's like, something I bother me. Me and say, what happened last night? Me and say to myself, say, what happened last night? But me not ask Tamika, <laughs> and me not ask her, but, mm -hmm. you know, her bunk was in front of, in front of me, and she sat up and she said, Woman of God. Mm. So when she said that, I sat and I looked at her. And I said, me? She said, yes. Mm -hmm. She said, um, why did you let go of my hand last night? And I said, I need not like what I feel. So, you know, I pull away. So she said, no. Mm -hmm. She said, that was the presence of the Holy Spirit. She said, that what you felt was the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, so I said to her, you know, um, my mother is a Christian. I started to just talk, talk to her about some things, you know. And, um, she started to minister. Mm -hmm. Every morning she minister. Mm -hmm. Every evening. It's like, sometimes I just feel to myself, so that lady I pick for me, but my mama tell you, she just unto me, unto me, unto me. Mm -hmm. Tamika in the cell. And she was by Tamika. She just <laughs> unto me. And I say, no, sir. And I tell me, I say, no, that I take me to the lady for those texts said for me, so. Anyway, she said to me one night, she said, you know, I want to lead her to the sinner's prayer. I want you to lead her to the repentance prayer, you and Tamika. Mm -hmm. And she started to like, we started to sing, we started to sing. Mm -hmm. And she looked at Tamika and she said, that voice that you have, you're wasting that voice. Mm -hmm. You should go and sing for Jesus. You should go and just worship God with that voice. And you know, she led me to the prayer and when I lay down at the night, I said, I couldn't sleep. Mm. It's like I was saying to myself, what is this? What is happening? Mm -hmm. I feel a piece of eating at the cell. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mother standing, I look at the Bible. Yeah. I couldn't sleep. Everybody was sleeping. I remember I stand up. Mm -hmm. And I held on to the grill and tears coming down my eyes. And I said, Lord, yeah. I don't know you, but... I hear my mother, I started to tell him that I heard my mother crying out a lot of times still. Yeah. Pray. I say, I go to church and I see people talk about you, but if you are the God and you said, you will never leave me nor forsake me. Mm. God, just show me a sign. Mm -hmm. just, just show me a sign. Just, just show me a sign. And right after I said that, yeah. I just feel a breeze just coming like this. And I like a shiver because mm -hmm. I was saying, my God, mm -hmm. I said it all so loud that Tamika jump up and Miss James jump up and I said, what happened? Mm -hmm. So I said, I said nothing. So she said, what happened? Mm -hmm. So I said nothing. And I sat back on the bunk and mm -hmm. I said, you know, I started the whole time. It's like, me I'm a pussy. And I said, no, I said, come in like, God, in this I said, yeah. And you know, the morning when I got up, mm -hmm. you have a lady that named Miss Blake. She usually wiped the passage right in front of the cell. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I stand up. I went for a cup of tea and she said to me, she said, Camille, mm -hmm. you're worrying? So I said, no, I'm not worrying about anything. And she said to me that, um, you know that I got a word for you last night. And may I say you again? <laughs> and I have it in her so. And you out the so. Mm -hmm. So she said, no, man. And she came over and she said, I'm not supposed to touch you, you know, but I'm just going to stand here in front of you and I just want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. You know that your purpose? Mm -hmm. God say I'm prayer warrior, you know. 
So I said to her, I said, Miss Daly, you know, no, we are talking about a prayer where I want to come out. I mm -hmm. want to come out of this place. Yeah. Anyway, she stand there and she prayed. After that, I didn't bother to take the tea. I walked off back and I went inside of the floor. Mm -hmm. And I just heard a voice said, Be still, because I am God. So I start look, because you see, Miss James and Tammy go over the side of a conversation. So it's like a pullback. Mm -hmm. The pull of my pullback is like, she just keep watching. She said, what happened? So I said, nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, nothing. Mm -hmm. I start to wonder if I hallucinate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I start to wonder if a voice is near here because this is tough Sunday I talk about now. Yeah. Anyhow, I remember in the night, I woke her up and I said, I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. In the mystery of a signature, I said, I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I started to explain to her what's happening to me. Yeah. So she said that to me, you know, that that's God. Mm. She started to minister to me. She held my hand, she prayed with me. Tamika woke up. Mm -hmm. Tamika said, I hear everything. Mm. You see you? You better go serve God when you come out here. Mm -hmm. I said, Tamika, where you come tell me about? Because remember, Tamika tough me tough. Mm -hmm. Me don't want me the baby one inside you. Yeah. So I said, tough it out. I said, Tamika, where you come tell me about? Mm -hmm. Serve God. Yeah. You're not ready for that yet. Mm-hmm. Tamika said, you're not ready for that? Mm-hmm. I tell you, when you go out, you better serve God. Yeah. The long and short of it, when we went before the bureau, they turned it down. They said they would not release me. Mm -hmm. My time is not yet. I went before it more than one time. They mm -hmm. turned it down. And this is they how long said, now? How long now? Going to like two months. Oh, wow. I'm still there. Mm -hmm. They turned it down. They said they would not release me. They said that Mr. Bruce Golden said he has interest in me. Mm. Um, at that point, my mother wrote me a letter. Mm -hmm. And she sent me a little card mm -hmm. with my pastor and his wife on it, celebration, mm -hmm. saying, um, God sent. Mm -hmm. When I received that card, mm -hmm. I just feel like something hit my old structure. Oh my God. And I was like, about that yard yeah, mm -hmm. and church. So it's like I kept this card and I keep saying, okay, Lord, when I come out at a church, I may go to. Mm -hmm. But if you're warm enough going to church, just show me some signs. Just, just, just show me some things. Say, are you really a call me? Because I don't want to go in and come out. But I start to talk to God now about these things. Yeah. The same lady when I mean, Miss Bailey, every morning she comes, she calls me and she just, she, if she don't sing, she minister and she come with a word, she come with a word, she come with a word. Mm -hmm. You have Miss Sharon in there every morning now. I start get the bathroom prepared before she got bed. Mm -hmm. I must start treat her like a mother. Yeah. So what happened now when we go in the bathroom, men are, I start questioning her about God. Because remember, my mother already planted this seed. Mm -hmm. My mother already planted the seed because many nights when I go to party, mm -hmm. I'm going to come home, I'm come see my mother in the bed. Yeah. I said, Mama, what you are doing in my bed? Mm -hmm. She said, I'm going to tell you what I do in my bed. I lift something in the field Aye. because you're a purpose. Aye. She said, all of your party life soon done. Come on. God, I'm going to just take you over one of them days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I said, Mommy, I'm not ready for the Jesus thing yet. She said, I know you ready. I went, God ready for you. Mm -hmm. So going behind the bars. Yeah. I went there. God allowed it to happen. Yes. He allowed that to happen because yes. when you have purpose, you know, anywhere you go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he might break you because him say you have to serve him. Yes. I yeah. tell people that I was there one night and I was just crying out to God, crying out to him. Mm -hmm. I start crying out to him. Mm -hmm. And the woman of God led me and she said, read about Penina mm -hmm. and Anna. Mm -hmm. And I started to read it. And that's where I discovered that Dwayne Park was my penina. When I got released, they put me on house arrest. Mm -hmm. They put me on house arrest. Mm -hmm. I went home. I was on house arrest for like another two months. Mm -hmm. um, when they said it would like finish the mountain, mm -hmm. I said the gentleman came back and he said to me that, um, you know, Mr. Bruce Golden said it will be extended. I said to him, sir, excuse me with no disrespect, 
tomorrow is Sunday morning and I'll be going to church and I'll be giving my life to God because enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I've seen where the devil have tried to destroy me. Mm -hmm. I've seen where if I don't run for my life, mm -hmm. I only go come kill me. Yeah. But a full time now, I said to myself, you know, you leave your yard and come out here, you know. Lock where I lock you up now. Mm -hmm. Lock where I lock you up. I went inside and I said to mommy, I said, mommy, you know what? I'm willing to get lock up. Yeah. I'm willing to get lock up. Mm -hmm. But I in the church. Mm -hmm. It's the same, same like how my name did make the gleaner. Yeah. And say my, my personal interest, yeah. the, me ever met the gleaner said them come take me out of the church. Yeah. The Sunday morning when I got up and getting ready to go to church, mm -hmm. my mother spin, she spin. Mm -hmm. Woman of God, she spin, she spin. Mm -hmm. She spin, she spin. What we do reach a parking town plaza? They said the church closed. Mm -hmm. So I started to cry. Yeah. So I see the security come and he knock the gate. They knock the car door and he said, what happened? I said, church is finished. He said, no, church is not finished. They have a crusade out by Mar Valley. Oh, Jesus. They have a crusade out by Mar Valley. Mm -hmm. So I say, you think they finish it? And I look at the time. He said, no, they're not done yet, man. Go on out there. You don't know the pastor then preach long. Mm -hmm. I said, all right. <laughs> anyway, when I went out there and I pulled up, I was just in time mm -hmm. to hear Prophet Carter said, is there anyone here mm -hmm. who is willing to give their life over to God? Nah, Jesus, tell me you run out of the car. What you just say? <laughs> I run out of the car. When mm -hmm. me I run past, one of the ministers them was at the door and she was saying, um, excuse me, let me have your name. I said, miss, my mother is at the back and she has my name. But I have made up in my mind yes. that that life, I wanted no more of it. Yes. it, 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 it I was just running for my life. Yes. yes. Because I realized that God had a purpose for me. Yes. What was happening when me I see, I never had a life that God wants for me. Mm -hmm. Me a purpose. Yes. Anyway, when I went there and pastor said to me that, you're ready? Because he look at him, him said, I run, me run, come inside. He said, mm -hmm. you're ready? So I said, yes, sir. He said, what's your name? And I said, come in, cook him, run off. Yes, Lord. And mm -hmm. him said, hold on. Church, mm -hmm. me not just a tell you to say, no condemn nobody down at West Kingston. Make could pray for them mm -hmm. because souls will be coming out of West Kingston. Oh my God. Tell the church your name mm -hmm. and I tell them my name. God. He said, I just told you no condemn nobody yes. from down at Tivoli. Make could pray for them. Mm -hmm. Here is one of the coke and many more will come. Yes. Woman of God, I gave my life over to God then. Yes. I planted I planted myself under the word of God under Prophet Michael Carter. Yeah. I sat under the word of God yeah. of Prophet Michael Carter. Mm -hmm. Persons came there to church mm -hmm. and they asked, What's she doing here? Mm. My God. Mm. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. He asked them, Oh, you mean what's she doing here? Mm -hmm. They said, She, I'm going to make them come shoot up your church. You know who is this you have in here? Mm -hmm. But guess what? I, I respect and love my pastor because he's truly a man of God. Yeah. Because I was battered, I was bruised, I was broken. Yeah. Just run coming to Jesus, I still felt a lot of rejection. Mm -hmm. Because persons who know your past, yes. they use that and build mm -hmm. a blockage. Mm -hmm. I remember one day I overheard a conversation with the next young lady. I walked down in the passage and she was telling me, you know who I come here? Mm -hmm. Jim Brown daughter. Mm -hmm. You know all with them, them, God no want to see them, you know? Church sisters, yeah, so man. Lord she Jesus. said, God no want to see them. Mm -hmm. So the next day they looked at her and said, oh, you mean God no want to see them? Mm -hmm. You know, see the girl? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, see transformation. Yeah. But she saw me coming and couldn't even tell her that I was coming. Mm -hmm. So I just stopped there and I said, you know what? My mother have taught me this. You are one of the deep divers. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But you see the anchor where anchor all of my sin down there and never nothing good. Mm-hmm. You see deep dive where love dig up my past. Mm-hmm. If you come up with it, God love you. Mm-hmm. Come in know God now make you come up with my past. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And she just she just stepped back and she said, never really mean nothing. Really. They mm-hmm. said, but the lady don't even know me. Mm-hmm. And you yeah, ask the lady if she don't know who I come here. Mm-hmm. I said, every day Pastor Carter tell you, I said, for leave people and they soon come in here. You understand? But yeah. I've sat on the celebration ministry yeah. and I've learned the word, mm-hmm. I've worked the word, mm. I've lived the word, mm. I've eaten the word, and I've given God all the glory because let me tell you something. My past wasn't nothing nice. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. But where am I now with God? Yeah. He has done great things through me. I've ministered on the pulpit of Celebration Church. Bless God. My pastor has given me the opportunity. I've carried power pack message, message that have impact person's life. Yeah. Even those that did not believe mm-hmm. when the Holy Spirit moved, yeah. there's nothing you can do more than just receive. Exactly. Because I've learned and my pastor has taught me Wherever you go, just be receptive, mm-hmm. receive, no matter who carry the word. Mm-hmm. Just readily to receive. Mm-hmm. Persons still have been judgmental. Yeah. But I like to ask them, does nothing good come out of Nazareth? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because I believe in my Christian world now, yeah. I'm moving forward. Yeah. I'm a big impact yes. in person's life. You have a young man in my community. We were part of person. He got saved in a church, mm-hmm. but he has backslidden because mm-hmm. of critics and condemnation. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to a funeral and I seen him sit on a wall. And I went over to him. I was led by the Holy Spirit and I went over to him and I said, you know, I'm going to minister Wednesday at church. I'd like you to come. Mm-hmm. He said, you have a minister? I said, yes. He came. Mm-hmm. He recommitted back his life. Because knowing where we are coming from, yeah. listening to my message, mm-hmm. when the Holy Ghost speaks through me, because I'm nothing without God. Ah, yes. I'm empty. Yes. Yeah. I'm empty without God. I'm nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm helpless. I'm useless. Mm-hmm. And the message, the message that I spoke when I ministered was about the glory of God. Yeah. And he came, he gave his life back to God. Mm-hmm. He ended up writing my ministry. He went overseas. He's yeah. married now. He's ministering. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> ah. um, I, I want to speak of another incident that happened in my community. I remember one day, some police, because you know, West Kingston have a lot of flaring up going on. Yeah. And the police came and he asked me if I wanted to accompany him. So I said, yes. There's a side mm-hmm. over and then I'm told. Police ask you if you want to come join them. Join them because <laughs> they were like walking through, talking to the unattached youth. So I said, yeah, man, I want to come. Mm-hmm. A party, and then I'm told, fighting against a party in Tivoli. Yeah. And when I went on the corner, like one of the youth said me, but he was cheering me because mm-hmm. he must say, Sandy Brown, mm-hmm. a minister, tell people about God. Mm-hmm. So I you know the Holy Spirit just lead me to him and I went over to him and I said, come here. I want to pray with you. Yeah. And I started to pray with him. Yeah. And during that prayer, the Holy Spirit said, I must wash his hands mm. with the water that I was drinking. Mm-hmm. So I started to wash his hands. And I said, you know what? I'm washing away your past. Yes. God is giving you another chance to move forward. Mm-hmm. But will you let go your past? Yeah. I said, will you let go your past and just serve God? I said, I've done it. Are you willing to do it? Yeah. But him stand there like a tough match going on. Because his friends was there. He, he wasn't responsive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was just standing there. Mm-hmm. So in front of him, he said, you know, your son, he said, he said, Miss Brown, you know, Miss Brown said, God said, for watch for your past. Yeah. So I said, no, leave him. And I heard the Holy Spirit said, said to me that um, who can't hear will feel. 
said, bust your foot and leave him, man. Mm. Oh, man, I did a walk, but I walk with tears. Yeah. A couple months after that, he passed. Yeah. He died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He died. So, you see, I've been a great impact in my community, ministering to souls. Yeah. Telling people about the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Where my business is, I stand there, I set up a sound system, mm -hmm. and I minister mm -hmm. persons over Tivoli. Them mm -hmm. daddy and them hear me, I minister. Yeah. I minister to them. Yes. So, I had a friend named Julie, she had cancer, and it was, you know, taking a toll upon her life. And I remember every Thursday mm -hmm. that I hold the mic, mm -hmm. I prayed for her, I prayed for her, God rise her up back. Mm -hmm. She yes, said God. to me, she said, Sandy, every prayer you prayed, yes. I heard them and I received them. My God. Yes, God. I can tell people mm -hmm. about the glory of God because the credit is not mine. Yeah. yeah. Because I am nothing, I'm useless. When I lift my hands, mm -hmm. when I lift my hands to heaven, mm -hmm. it is God himself. Yeah. It is God himself. Mm -hmm. He said, by your stripe, he is healed, but you have to believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you not believe in I'm healing power, because if God said, touch her on the shoulder, mm -hmm. where she have that pain, if I come and I say, God say, I must touch you on the shoulder. If you don't believe, it makes no makes sense. sense. Or if you're just looking at, I sand that. No, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, man. Sandy, Camille. No one call it Camille, because Sandy Brown gone for yes, sure. Yes, man. The coke will be there, and that's okay. Yes, because that's guess okay. what? Joseph couldn't get rid of his past. No. Because guess what happened? God used him to go prepare yes. what was to come. And it wasn't just about what was to come. It was about his immediate family. I don't know if you realize because Joseph was in another, another part of the world in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, preparing. And they had plenty about where his family was. There was a famine there. Yes. And so they had to come over. Right. God would have caused one, just one, to go over. Come at the way. Yes. So that they eventually come mm -hmm. over. And so think it not strange that God would have brought you full 360. You had to endure all of what you had to endure. Yes. But I bless God for your mom. And I bless God for those who are praying. And I tell you something, as I listen to you, Tesha Miller's mom, I don't know, is she still alive? Yes, and she's still alive. She went to, she went to jail for you. Yeah. Oh my God, woman of God. God allowed that woman to come behind the bars. Just for you. To break me in my purpose. Yes. yes. Because, let me tell you something, she never gave up. Yeah. Until the day I surrendered, yeah. she never gave up. It, it, it started happening away. And me start to come, let us pray. Yeah. Even sometimes she start falling into depression because when she look and she see her situation, she was like, me a big woman. Yeah. And the day that I said that to her, I said, God allowed you to come in here for me. Yes. And she broke down in tears and she said, Sandy, I never saw it that way. Yeah. I never saw it. But it's so yeah. true. This morning, when I was showing, the Holy Spirit brought back this to me. Same Joseph situation. Mm -hmm. He was thrown in the pit. Yes. But when he came from the pit, where did he went? Uh -huh. Where he did went, he went? He went to prison. You understand? Uh -huh. And from there, uh -huh. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He took me back to Moses also. Yeah. He said Moses was growing in the house of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes God put in at some places. Yes. Tight spots. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. Strategically, if you learn some things, yes, yes, because when you're out, you're going to need all of these tools. Yes, yes. you need all of these tools because sometimes there's some fear in your presence, Come you on, girl. Mm -hmm. But God show you strategically, yeah, how to defeat fear, yeah. Because in my community, let me tell you something. West Kingston is built on a revival ground, mm -hmm. mm. but you see. Territorial spirits. Yes. How mm -hmm. do we deal with it? Yeah. It's a hard ground. Oh, yeah. We as Christians, it's not right for us to get whole feet in. You gotta be strong. You gotta be strong. Mm -hmm. Because 
all of these spirits warm back then place. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So, you see, the youths then with what's happening there, yeah. it's not nothing normal. Mm -hmm. But how do we as Christians deal with it? You can't live on the road and a gunman live on the road and you move feeble. Yeah. Uh, you have to make it know, say, you're wrong. Yes. Not with, not with your physical weapons. No. But with your spiritual, spiritual man. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to make him hear you a man in time. Mm. Come on. A soon your trumpet. Yes. Yes. You have to make him hear your man in time. Mm. A worship and pray. My God. And them for fear. But as I realize now, the Christians, yeah, we'll fear, I take them over. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I tell you. That's true. Because sometimes some things that I see happening in the community, you have Christians that walk past 20, 50, and I touch youths mm. with them Bible like this every morning and come on, man. Yeah. That's why I tell them, say, I love my church. Mm -hmm. Pastor Carter said, I could go in at the bar for them. Yeah. We could go in at the dungeon, I could go up on the street, I could, could go where the homosexuals are. Yes. I could go where the ladies are laying their body. Yes. Let us go for them. Yes. Because it is that spirit yes. that pulls them, yes. them a purpose. And as I listen to you to confirm that, the spirit of the Lord is what drew you. Yes. And he drew you in your place. Yes. You notice, in never, in never, we feel come a church, you know. He came in a pan, it could have, could have been deemed as a pandemic, or right. whatever you call it. The, the country was in turmoil. Yes. Your family was in a yes. hot mess. Yes. Right? Your family was also mourning and the whole works. So you were behind bars, so even your own children were subjected to the hurt and the pain. Of course. But it was that place that God wanted to reach you. That place right behind the bars. Sandy, we are, we're going to wrap up. I, I want to know when you're ministering at church. Sure. Because me want to come. Sure. Um, <laughs> Cause I the last think... message I, I, I ministered was in um, December about revival. Yeah. It's about revival. And I, I remember I ministered a message called Untime Word. Mm. You know, because sometimes persons may have they need a pastor and they need a this, you know. I said, God chose them. Mm -hmm. He chose the apostles. Yeah. He chose the deacons, the deaconess. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need them because sometimes the untimed word, you may be going to a situation mm -hmm. and God allowed the minister to come up there. Yeah. And the word has so much impact. And it's the word that, that has the impact. Oh, it's not even us. We're just vessels. No, the, the word is sharp. Yes. The word ah. is sharp like a two it. When the road cuts, the word cuts some road and some lane yeah. in a man. Yeah, man. You know, yeah. I've not but to the subject. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. As we wrap up, my darling, so you went under the radar for a while. Yes. And somehow I believe that God is now pulling you back out. Yes. What can we expect from you? Because we're wrapping up. We're actually out of time. What can we expect? Well, from as you? I tell you, you can just always look out for Camille Court ministering. Yeah. Sharing the gospel. Telling people about God. I, I will be sharing my testimony straight. Yes. Persons who really know me yeah. know that Camille then, Sandy then, and Camille now is two different persons. Mm -hmm. I'm truly a lover of God. Yeah. Truly a lover of God. And I've sat under the word. I've lived in the word. Yeah. I've lived my life as closely as I can to the word of God mm -hmm. because I know that the devil is mad. Yeah. He is mad. Yeah. So, you know, um, I give God thanks yes. and I honor you, woman of God, for having me in your program. And I would encourage people to just give God a chance in their life. Yeah. Give him a chance. Yeah. Because, you know, God is the masterpiece of our life. Mm -hmm. He's the masterpiece. I tell people, I said, listen to me. Without God, without having God in your life, yeah. it's just like beer madness. Yeah. Beer madness. Yeah. Well, thank you again, my darling woman of God. I bless you. I bless you. And I thank you so much for coming. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it for yourself right here. She's debuting, for want of a better word, Camille Cope. Yes, she's coming out. Powerful ministry. 
conferences going to be having her talk shows i'm telling you listen out this this is just going to be one channel that this woman is coming out on but yeah. there are going to be so many others because it's about time for her story to come about so i want to hear from you do you know this woman what do you think um, regarding her story do you believe that jesus saves sanctifies and he delivers well put it down in the comment Thank you again, guys, for tuning in. I'll see you next week with another exciting episode. Remember, uniquely me, definitely.